Greetings, members one and all of the Salivation Nation. The longest record broken. The gold to silver ratio has hit its highest in over 5,000 years. Let's explore. <laughs> Actually, when I was alerted to this, uh, an anonymous uh, member of the community sent me a link to a different uh, story about this, but uh, I thought it was an all-time record. But apparently, we've been here before, but it's just been 5,000 years ago. This is quite intriguing indeed. Before we get into the gold to silver ratio, let's actually take a look at the prices as of the recording of this video, which uh, today is the 18th of March. The, to 2020 and you can see that where the precious metals market is taking a beating again uh in all of the metals and uh pretty big hits and uh, especially in rhodium right now but when you look between silver and gold silver is taking a much bigger hit in terms of the uh price now i posted a video yesterday talking about the uh the independence of the physical market from the from the paper markets and the gold and silver. And I think we're seeing that anybody who's tried to buy gold and silver online are seeing much higher premiums these days. There are a few exceptions. Guido Stacking had posted a video talking about uh, some of those exceptions, Scottsdale Mint, but other uh, places are starting to source some cheaper silver out there, still with high premiums, but not nearly as, as, uh, as bad as they as they were a day or so ago but nonetheless there's a huge demand and that is the marketplace there's there's the paper markets and then there's a the physical market to get the physical metal it's quite a bit of a challenge um mostly people are paying the same prices or maybe even a little bit more before this big crash had occurred in the paper markets here but that does leave us these are the real prices this is spot price it is what it is it's not what you're going to be paying. Um, in fact, there are times when you can sell your silver for a couple of dollars over spot. We uh, interviewed a bullion dealer who would pay more for silver eagles, up to $4 more, at least as of the recording of that interview. Uh, but each day is very different, for sure, in that regard. But the gold to silver ratio, as it stands as of the recording of this video, is 123.8. But it was a little bit higher. And uh, that is numbers I've never seen before, and we've not seen these numbers for the last 100 years at least. In fact, this article here from NASDAQ.com says it's the highest it's been for over 5,000 years. Very interesting indeed. Another day, another disaster, says the author. We're getting used to record-breaking moves nowadays. This is the fastest the stock market has ever gone from a peak to a bear market. The Dow Jones Industrial Average fell 12.93% on Monday, beating the worst day in 1929, negative 12.82%. And by the way, it's down another 1,300 points today. The mo most amazing record was not in the stock market, however. It was the long-standing record in what's perhaps the longest-running price series in financial history. The gold-to-silver ratio which is the price of one ounce of gold in terms of ounces of silver. Monday's market sent that price to a record high, the highest level in over 5,000 years. We have data for this series dating back a long, long time. During the Pharaoh Menes time, circa 3100 BCE or BC, for example, the ratio was two and a half times, whereas in King Humurabi's day, which is about 1750 BCE, it was six times. The legendary Greek king Croesus, circa BCE 560, was supposedly invented gold and silver coins, was more of a gold bug. He used the 13.33 times ratio. Emperor Constantine, from 280 to 337 CE, or AD, uh, was less so at 10.5 times. We have more frequent data starting from 1687, courtesy of measuringworth.com that confirms it. 
Yesterday, the gold to silver ratio was the highest ever. The ratio peaked at 123.78. Let's pause and take a look at it now. It's up above that now. It's 123.8. Crazy. During Asian trading today, it dropped back to around 116 to 117. And of course, as of the recording of this video, it's back up and breaking, uh, breaking its previous record of yesterday. But once London came in, it went shooting back up to the 120 to 121 range. For reference, on Friday, it averaged 101.74. And during all of 2019, it averaged 86.04. This is an amazingly swift change in the price. The previous high before this month was in 1940 when it was averaging 99.76 for the year. But in 1991, it also was was up uh, around that time period too. I thought it went over 100 in 1991. It is not clear, at least to the author, exactly what drives this ratio. The best correlation that could be found was with the 10-year U.S. break-even inflation rate. But contrary to what one might think, the ratio tends to go up, that is, gold outperforms when inflation expectations are lower. He thought the gold was supposed to be the hedge against inflation. Perhaps this was just the experience of the last 20 years uh, when inflation hasn't been much of a problem. In that case, lower expected, expected inflation would mean central banks cut their policy rates and lower interest rates tend to boost the gold price. And B, lower expected inflation probably stems from lower expected economic activity, which might impress less industrial demand for silver. Although the author must admit he couldn't find a clear link between industrial activity and the price of silver. Well, probably not. But in the recent years, we've seen the versatility of silver really shine, and which means that the demand for it in the industrial and technology and biomedical fields has certainly uh, increased in that regard. I do believe there is a case for silver to be more of a commodity than as a hedge or as money. But I still believe it is a hedge. I believe it is money in spite of where the price is and in spite of where the ratio is. And why is that? Well, look at the demand. The demand and the, um, the the amount of premiums for silver on, as a base off of a percentage compared to gold is much higher, which means you are paying, uh, um, you know, about the same price for silver um, dollar amount as you were before these this massive dump that the marks have taken on it on the metal. And here we see the gold to silver ratio versus the U.S break-even inflation rate. This is quite intriguing to see the inflation rate versus the gold to silver ratio and they've really skyrocketed both of them here as of late. It does appear that before the global financial crisis at least global interest rates played a part in determining this ratio as one might expect since gold tends to rally during periods of lower interest rates but afterward not really. So here we see the gold to silver ratio versus the uh, G10 official policy rates. And we can see the gold to silver ratio there spiking down to that 120. And the G10 average policy rate moving there. And uh, GDP weighted average. There's some evidence that the ratio goes up before and during recessions. But it also goes up during times of healthy economy, too. Uh, so this is not definitive. And we can see it. Citibank found that for the period of the first quarter of 2011 to the first quarter of 2019, only changes in the yen, excessive reserves, and inflation expectations had a statistically significant, which has a p-value of 0.05% impact on the price ratio of gold to silver. In short, the author can't say exactly uh, what has driven this ratio to the highest level in some 5,120 years, but it does prove one thing beyond a doubt. The financial markets are an extraordinary, unprecedented situation, and that cannot be stressed enough. So all those people saying that this is the new normal, well, this is completely abnormal. I do believe, however, that the new average for a gold to silver ratio will probably go up after this. Or may not, or may not. I mean, because of this unprecedented action, it could turn everything upside down. Where we have new normals, 
that could squeeze the gold to silver ratio. The view of the ratio by wheat and precious metals is that the ratio is an indicator of the global monetary condition. According to their analysis, during periods of inflationary monetary proliferation, the ratio falls. During areas of deflationary monetary destruction, the ratio rises. To put it plainly, these highs are alerting us to pervasive capital shortage that agrees with what the author found, that the ratio tends to rise when inflation expectations fall. It would also explain why this historical high uh, coincides with the most powerful coordinated central bank injections of funds since the global financial crisis, and indeed, perhaps ever. It would also go along with the widening currency basis and the Fed's move to make currency swaps more available. Perhaps a 5,000-year high in this indicator is warning us of a tremendous deflationary period ahead. And uh, one other point that may not be connect that may be connected is how accurately the price of gold that has seen the screen reflects the actual demand. And we talked about that in yesterday's video too, about the widening the physical gold price compared to the paper gold price, which is widening, but it's even widening even more with silver. There's been a surge in retail demand for gold coins and bars at the same time as the price has been falling. It seems that the paper market, the futures and ETFs, is, det is determining the price does not reflect the heightened demand on the street for hard metal, the physical metal, during this time of insecurity. In the case, gold prices could be even higher and the ratio even higher than what we see. Uh, given how exceptional the current ratio is for an extraordinarily long data series that we have, does this mean silver is a good bet to appreciate versus gold now? Over the longer term, I would think so. But I think so too. I think uh, it may not be so bad. I don't regret my purchase I'm paying either close to five or of dollars an ounce over spot for eagles when I did the purchase because uh, you know I think that those prices could you know could normalize and we'll see these you know, these even with these this good deal this opportunity silver that's starting to appear and that may run out very quickly as people find these deals you know paying you know uh, 16 16 bucks right now for an ounce of silver is a good deal comparatively out there so let's see even though silver is at 12 bucks an ounce now the author makes no uh, claim to understanding what exactly the ratio has hit a 5,000 year high in these volatile times i'd be reluctant to put any trade in a market i don't understand simply because the levels seem extreme that's really what it boils down to don't buy something you don't understand and when many of us say that we're backing up the truck when the prices go low when we find deals on silver it's mainly because we understand it, at least the fundamentals of it to the degree that it has intrinsic value that uh, um, can separate from the real price value, from the price value. You know, people think, oh, well, it's a, it's a losing money. It's a losing proposition. And in terms of dollar signs, that's true. But look at what people are paying for silver nowadays. And when you go and find uh, at $12 uh, Silver, when you find a deal out there for uh, fifteen fifty or fourteen dollar, fourteen fifty for a hundred ounce bar, fourteen fifty per ounce for a ten ounce bar, or what have you, and that's a great deal, um, you know, considering you know two dollars and some odd cents over spot, when normally those bars are like you know between eighty cents to sixty cents over spot, you know. That there's some there is a separation between that physical and paper markets, but the gold to silver ratio, in terms of the price, is wider than it's ever been before, and it's intriguing and interesting to see. These we live in unprecedented times right now, and of course with all this stuff going around with the coronavirus, COVID nineteen, everybody stay safe out there. The whole market is upside down right now. There's an unprecedented government action. There's unprecedented um, reaction in an era of social media and instant information exaggerates on all different levels and the reactions to it and the understanding of it takes some time to really uh, digest all of this information and there you have it so post your thoughts below uh, thanks again to the anonymous viewer who sent me uh, the other article about this 
And I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for watching and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe. <laughs>